Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you can see from the title of this video, I'm going to be giving you a breakdown of what I thought was good and bad about the Call of Duty Modern Warfare beta weekend one that we just played. So I have a few notes written down here, a couple of things that aren't too major and a couple of things that they probably do need to fix come to the actual release of the game. So I'm going to start off with the good. And I do want to mention that this game is really good. I've really enjoyed the first weekend of the beta. Played it in PlayStation 4, obviously, used the mouse and keyboard for the entire time. Worked like a dream. Really looking forward to being able to use the PC for the crossplay beta next week. So, yeah, I'll be doing a couple of videos throughout the week on Modern Warfare, so make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with that, as well as the Borderlands 3 series, which is going to be starting very soon as well. Uh, but, yeah, let's get straight into into it so i do want to start off and i'll give you some gameplay and maybe some examples here whenever i'm speaking but the sounds in this game oh my god you can tell that the extra effort was put into the game so mainly yes so the surround sound and hearing players from behind you is great but the main thing to me is that punch that kick from the the guns the and like I want to say more about the guns, but I'm strictly the sound in particular is great. The The weapons feel powerful and really satisfying when you're using them. Even one of my favorite guns, probably the M4A1 with the suppressor, it still feels powerful. It still sounds good. And like a gun like the AK with that crazy noise is just amazing. And yeah, kind of lining into that, the guns... All the guns that I used, and I tried to get through all of them in the beta, feel really powerful. They feel like a real gun. So that's sick. The next thing I've got written down is fire mode. So also relating to the guns is like, you can now, on the guns that I think would do it in real life, obviously they would have got the, the info on that. You can change between semi-automatic, fully automatic, or like semi-auto and round burst and stuff like that. And that's just really nice to not have to worry about an attachment because realistically in these guns I think that's the way they come where you have just a, a switch and you can do these different firing modes so just to have that was really good. Uh, staying on the guns, the sniping in this game feels very, very like satisfying. Um, the scopes and stuff are really good. I think it's going to be a good year for sniping. Not sure what it's like for quick scoping. I'm not particularly good at it, but it's really good. Another thing is reloading while aiming down sights. So this is kind of a throwaway thing, but the fact that you can still be holding an area or something, aiming down sights, and just you're literally still aiming your guy hand down, puts the mag in, back up. It's really good. I don't know realistically if it makes a difference, but to not actually do the animation to put your gun down then reload and bring it back up, it feels like it's saving a bit of time, so it's really nice. Um, let's see, while we're still on the note of the guns, the gunsmith, oh my god. So, this is going to be covered to death by other YouTubers and things, I don't want to go too deep into it, but I will give my example of why I like it so much. And I do recommend maybe checking out someone's video where they go more in depth on the gunsmith. Um, so whenever you get create a class, one of the first guns you get is the M4A1. So I made a class with it, no attachments obviously, because I need to level the weapon up. The recoil was very unpredictable. It had a lot of vertical recoil. But every so often it would give a really strange kick. So it would come up like this and it might go like that a bit. And it would just do that every so often. The vertical recoil is easy enough to handle. That's what we're traditionally used to in most guns. But it was that kick side to side. So I decided after I got a few levels up in the weapon. To start doing like attachments tailored to stop in this horizontal recoil. So straight away can look through the grips and stuff certain grips are better for horizontal recoil and they might have other benefits but the key to the gunsmith on why it seems so good is because not all attachments only benefit so previous call of duties normally your attachment would benefit the gun in a certain way 
it would negatively affect it. In this game, every 90% of attachments have positives and negatives. So for example, the angle grip which was helping horizontal recoil, I think made for slower ADS times or something like that. The heavy stock definitely um, was slower ADS times and it stopped horizontal. But I went through the attachments particularly aiming for just getting rid of the horizontal recoil. Whatever ones I then attach like the grip, so that angle grip and the actual where you have your hand to shoot that grip. Uh, didn't go for a muzzle because all of them seemed to negatively affect a few of the stats which I didn't want to change until I unlocked the suppressor. So I tried the gun, shooting it, perfect, horizontal recoil was gone, became a bit of a laser, uh, ADS time was hurt I think was the biggest thing. So you can find that middle ground. So the next thing I did was leveled up a bit more, got the suppressor which actually ended up helping the vertical recoil as well as reducing the range a little bit. Not a huge amount. So next thing, suppressor on the gun. And oh my god, the M4A1, my build in particular, was really good for like medium to long ranges. I was taking people out because it's a relatively high fire rate weapon. Um, wasn't awful short range, but if you're running around corners, I wasn't able to pull it up as quick as like a submachine gun or the gun before I had them attachments on. So that's like a main reason why the gunsmith is so cool. And I have so many ideas for YouTube videos when the main game releases. So, let's see, yes, so you can kill trade in this game, which I am a fan of. I think if two people run around the corner, both pull up a shotgun at the same time and shit, and you both kill each other, that's the way it goes. If people get mad, that's fine, uh, because now each bullets are actual entities. Um, the doors, so uh, whenever I heard about the doors, I was kind of like, okay, this is why they're making such a big deal of this, but I get it, it's sick. I don't know how to put it into words why it makes such a difference, but just knowing that there could be an enemy team in there and they've closed the doors and you don't know whether to run through them or just try and peek and be sneaky or like open it a tiny bit and throw like a grenade in. There's just so many new ways to take the games and I'm predominantly a running gunner, so I was just barging through the doors, so machine gun or my AK, just hoping for the best and it was so good. Um, let's see, for the last thing for the good are the maps. So disclaimer, and this will lead into the bad, I think the maps are really, really good for objective based game modes. Team deathmatch on this game, I'm not a huge fan compared to the likes of Black Ops and stuff. So people have been complaining a lot recently, and well not everyone, but that the maps have lost heart in Call of Duty because they're being forced so much to be three lanes. And World War Two was probably the worst example of this. It literally three lanes. That was it. Black Ops Four is the same, but because they added so many older maps to the game, it uh, kind of helped. But the the maps, there's a lot of there's a decent amount of verticality. And whenever they were talking originally about giving you options to like jump about the map and stuff, you can do that. It's really fun. So if Team Martin ever wants to do jumps and spots series again. This game will be really good because I've genuinely found areas that I haven't seen people in that I was up sniping in. Like along the containers near the A objective on that new train map, the map that they added to the beta after a day and stuff. It was so good. And objective based game modes, as I was saying, like headquarters and domination. So much fun. I do want to do one meh point, which is I don't know if it's good or it's bad. And I didn't even realize this until I was watching TP's stream. Headshots are very strong. So he didn't like it. He, th he doesn't think it should be like a multiplier. But the headshots in this game definitely have like a multiplier. Because you can wipe people out in one or two bullets. If for example you have an SMG and you run around and you, you shoot. You start hitting their body and you flick up. Like one bullet will hit their head and they're dead. I didn't have an issue with it. If you're a better player and you can get the headshots, I think you're deserving of that. Um, maybe if it does become a problem where everyone's literally getting headshots, they could tone it down a bit. But I, I personally think there's, there should be a bit of a multiplier for the head, without a doubt. But yeah, that's a, that's a interesting one. So on to the bads. Now some of these aren't too bad. Some of them do need 
fixed for the main game. So the net code. It's not great, it's not terrible, but I did notice it at times. So the classic run around corners, when you when you get around the corner you die, essentially, and then you watch the kill cam, and it happens in the kill cam as well. So an example of a thing was, sh guy killed me, I was around the corner, I was like, wait, what, like, how? I seen the kill cam, the guy, like, tracked me, which was fine, but I went around the corner, and it was as if he still shot, and it hit the wall, and it was as if, like, it, that bullet would have hit me, but it wouldn't have, because it was like a corner of a house. The last bullet, the last two bullets definitely didn't hit me, and I died, so I was kind of like, hmm, that's not great. I think that's related to that, People were jittering about. I think that's net code more than lag. And there was all the time that the freezers were, or freezers, the servers were freezing. Um, another thing. So, not sure how the matchmaking works in this game. The every time you play a game, and this might be just for the beta. Say if I was queuing for quick play, been a game of domination on map, six v six. That game finishes. Go back to the lobby. I'm like, okay, I'm going to edit a class, go into Weaponsmith. Change of class, next thing I get pulled out. I'm still in the lobby, and it's like I've joined a new lobby, even though I was in the lobby. And it stops, doesn't save my progress for um, my Weaponsmith, and then you go and you start it again, and then you have like 10 seconds until you're into the game. Thankfully, you can edit the classes make game, which is another thing that I didn't mention in good. But yeah. Um, and yeah, sometimes... And I don't know if this is a beta issue or not, but I was getting into like team death matches and stuff where it was like 3v3 when it should have been 6v6. And then uneven team numbers, but they're, they'll definitely be fixed. Um, this thing, this next point happened to me quite a lot and it felt like I was stuck in the mud. So you might see in some of the gameplay that I'm showing, but my character, I'd spawn in. It would always happen after spawn and I would start moving and I'd be walking super slow super slow if i had sprint my character would do the animation but it was super slow like slower than walk speed and i'd have to jump or something to get out of it and this happened often enough not every time i spawned but say every one in four times i spawned that would happen and it was something that i don't know why but it definitely does need fixed it was a bit triggering not it didn't get me killed ever or anything, but it was just kind of like, oh, this is a bit annoying. Um, and yeah, I think I mentioned this, but about feeling lost in Team Deathmatch. The last point I put, and this is purely for the beta, was the level 10 cap, but obviously they put it up to 20. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how the goods and the bads that I found with Modern Warfare. If you have played it and you can think of anything else, let me know in the comments. I'm planning on doing this for weekend two to see if there's any major improvements. Um, but yeah, honestly, this game is really good. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of people and they're like, I haven't played COD in so long because oh, they started adding all this exo crap and stuff. I was like, I'm a big COD guy. Always have been, probably always will be. And I think that this game is the chance to bring us back up. I do think Call of Duty recently has been getting better. I think World War Two wasn't great. Black Ops 4, I think, is a really good game. I do think it's underrated. I play it on PC and it's just not as good in the PC. It might still be good on the, the console. And obviously they've done a lot in that game. And the zombies is great and everything. But this world or modern warfare, I do feel like it's the start of something, getting caught back to what it was, as well as cross platforms going to make a huge difference. And a video I will be making next week is like a mouse and keyboard uh, versus controller comparison. So yeah, there's a lot to look forward to, guys. This week loads of videos make sure to subscribe and as well hit that like button if you haven't already thanks for watching